Please, without further ado, welcome to the stage one of the stars of Hairspray Live, Tony Award winner, Miss Kristen Chenoweth. <laughs> Get over here, you. And award-winning executive producer, Neil Marin. How exciting was that? I mean, we were standing there. Yeah, right? You were dancing during the show, right? You have all those Jerry Mitchell steps down, right? You're good. That's good. That's what we want. Oh, this is great. And this is a reunion for you two. The first question I want to ask you is, when did you two first meet? <laughs> well, it's, um, we met. I, I, was, I was 16. She was 16, <laughs> winning a, a Tony Award for yeah. Your Good Man, Charlie Brown. Yes. And uh, we, offered, we offered her um, a role in Annie that we did on ABC. We didn't want the show to close, but at the same time, we wanted the show to close because if the show closed, we would have her in the cast. Oh. And she won the Tony Award and the show closed about a week later and she was on a plane the next day and it was her film debut. Yeah. And, and we've been uh, besties. <laughs> Yeah, since then. Yeah. Since then, yeah. It's like my brother, my brother. Yeah, I mean, and we've, we've done about five projects together, including Promises, Promises. Yes. On promises, Broadway. Promises. A lot of fans here from that. You know, that's one of my all-time favorites. I, I yeah. was so proud of that show. Yeah. And to be with, um, who would then ultimately become truly one of my best friends, Sean Hayes. Yeah. We had such a great cast. It was a big family. Yeah. It was, and it, it, I look back on it, and I'm, it was... Um, so, uh, you know, Burt Backrack and Hal David, their score is so beloved. Yeah. And then, of course, we did Music Man together, yeah. and um, just it just continues on. And then Hairspray, it just yes. continues yeah. on. You know, I called up Kristen, and I said, uh, how would you feel about playing Velma? It was one of those phone calls. <laughs> She's like, yes! <laughs> those are those great phone calls you yeah. get through life, right? You know, at this, you know, we all have lived, right? And now we get sometimes phone calls you just don't want. But when I know Neil calls, I'm like, all right. Yeah. It's either going to be really funny about life or it's going to be maybe something uh, cool. And I'm or so sometimes I call just for dinner. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when are we going to Joe Allen's? When are we yeah. going to go see? Yeah. Yes. When are we going to go to dinner in LA? Yeah. Well, my first question is for Neil. How did you decide on Hairspray as your next big live production? Um, after coming off of The Wiz, which was really great for yep. us. Let's hear it for The Wiz uh, Live. Yes. 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 I love The Wiz. Um, yeah. We were thinking about, you know, it was a very meaningful experience. And. Hairspray kind of just felt right, just in terms of the message, the energy, and the opportunity to do, to honor what it was on Broadway. Because Craig Zayden and I did the movie version, but it wasn't, it was a movie. It wasn't the Broadway version. And what we try to do on TV is we try to honor Broadway and we try to get the best cast possible. And we tr and so, and it was also the opportunity that Harvey didn't have in the movie to have him preserve his uh, greatest role. Yeah. Velma Von Tussel, how much fun was she to play? <laughs> oh, I was so, Judine is here from yes. the show. Yeah, where's Judine? Right here, Judine. Somerville, one of the dynamites right here. Yes, 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 yes. Welcome. That's, that's like a royalty. That's yeah. Hairspray and Broadway royalty right there. But um, back to me. So. <laughs> You know I'm king, girl. <laughs> um, I was scared, and I was pretty. Uh, I think I was pretty um, open. I tell Neil a lot of my my fears, and I said I'm kind of scared to play her because, you know, she's a white racist former beauty pageant girl, and I just I don't mind the former beauty pageant part. <laughs> that I know well, but I um I was nervous. I really wanted to lead with. Of course, racism is a, a key and a and a tone in the piece that, but but it's, but but it's really about the music and the message, right? Which is hope, and um, and love and forgiveness, and that's what I wanted. That's what I I, in my eight bars and you can't stop the beat. I I tried to 
have all of that happen for her. <laughs> um, but I did want to lead with who she is because yeah. that's, um, it's like not having an antagonist or protagonist in the piece. But I also wanted people to understand that it was of a time and in some ways and in some areas of our country and places in the world we have not um, moved forward yeah. as much as we need to. And um, I, I hoped that when people watched her they would say, I know somebody like that and maybe I can influence them. And also, not just with racism, but just um, leading with sort of hate. So once I understood and went, okay, there's that, now what else is there that you can sort of have that's sort of redeemable and fun, um, if you can? <laughs> and I thought, you know what, she's living through her child, and the truth is she still thinks, if I really believe that Velma can can hold the title of Miss Baltimore Crabs at any point, then that is the humor in it. And um, she does say, I might have to fill this moment at any time. Yeah. And she means it. So if her daughter Amber can't do it, she's ready. So that's what I tried to live with and concentrate on. And I also viewed it as she was sort of, not crazy, but lived in her own world of pageantry and perfection. So that's the way I could kind of live with playing that kind of part. Yeah. Anyway, that's a long answer, but you know, you have to think of those things when you're playing an unlikable par person. Yeah. But she totally redeems herself at the In end. Eight bars. <laughs> <laughs> so Neil, my next question is for you. You reinvented a TV tradition that was dormant for many years. And now all the networks are following suit because of what you started. What made you take the first step, and where do you see the genre going in the next few years? Oh, um, I think the, the idea came, uh, Craig and I had done uh, TV movies, musicals, and we've done feature film musicals, and one of the things that we talked about, what is next? So, you know, it's kind of a cliche, you look backwards to go forward. So we were thinking about these live musicals that were done in the 50s, like uh, Rodgers and Hammerstein's Cinderella with Julie Andrews and Mary Martin's Peter Pan. And we thought, what if we were to do a musical live? And it was a crazy idea. And uh, I had called up Ted Chapin, who runs the Rodgers and Hammerstein organization. <laughs> and I told, I told him the idea, and he didn't think it was crazy at all. So given that knowledge that we were able to get the rights, we called up Bob Greenblatt, who is the chairman of NBC, and a big theater advocate and a theater producer, one of the producers of Dear Evan Hansen, uh, and, uh, and a great friend. And he, he actually, we didn't call. He called us around the same time, and he said, how would you guys like to do a new TV movie version of Oklahoma? And Hello, yeah. I'm from Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we said no. <laughs> oh, no. Dang it. We, we have something better. And then we pitched him the idea of Sound of Music Live. And it was kind of exactly the reaction we wanted because he understood the possible event nature of it. And uh, from that moment on, we made the deal with Rogers and Hammerstein, and we called uh, Carrie Underwood. And, Yay, and I love without, her. you know, without Carrie, this basically, you, a lot of the credit for the success of this whole genre is due to Carrie. For sure. I mean, she carried it, no pun intended. Yeah. She, she actually shouldered she that responsibility. She did. And she. And as far as we were all concerned, she did a fantastic job. And out of that became a tradition. So you know we where always... she's from too, right? Mm, <laughs> Oklahoma. Maine. Oklahoma. <laughs> There's a yeah. lot of talent yeah. in Oklahoma. A lot Oklahoma. of talent. Yeah, there's a good song. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm gonna play Ann Eller yeah. when you guys tell me how <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. I can churn butter. Annie. Oh, no. Annie. <laughs> and what'd you say? Hey, do Annie. Oh, well, yeah, she likes whoever, whoever she's well, with. But you say no a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. We're having our own little I party. I love it. Here. I love it. I just want to say,
say this too. I think it's awesome that it that it happened in the universe with it was it had to be Craig and Neil, yeah. and it had to be Bob, and it had to be NBC because NBC had had um, originally done a Mall in the Night mis Visitors, and uh, they did Peter Pan. And yeah. yeah but in the fifth, they were like the original originators of it, yeah. and so just full circle. Yeah. Well, Kristen, take us into the rehearsal process, working out both the choreography and the camera blocking and singing live for television, because you literally, she just finished her Broadway show. I mean, she literally brought her concert to Broadway, took the entire town by storm. And, and then, it was extended when... Yes. <laughs> and then you flew out. I think I saw you that last night. And you're like, I'm flying out to California. I start rehearsals like That's right. at 8 a.m. the next day. Yes. So tell the audience what that was like leaving Broadway and then going out there and your number was done first, I think. Like you, well, they had been, I, I believe they had been rehearsing um, a hairspray for a couple weeks before. And so they had, it, they, they have it so organized, yeah. as you know, Jenny. I mean, it was, it was organized. So when I arrived to start um, in, in our, you know, putting myself in the show, Kenny and of course Jerry Mitchell, the great Jerry Mitchell, were, were ready. And we did. I started with uh, Baltimore Crab. So I flew out after my love letter to Broadway and yeah. started. And it was actually great because I'm one of those, and I know that you young artists out there or people who've done shows, I could be the one that gets sad after a piece is done. And after my love letter, which was a bucket list for any career, and you know this about me. Oh. You know, it was a special, special yeah. time in my life. And I was sad. I, I didn't want it to end. But then I show up in Hairspray, and I see all these kids, and I meet some of the greatest people in my career so far, and I'm with, you know, family. I, it, it just, it just kept the circle going and the inspiration going. And get, I, it, it, I get a little emotional when I think about it because I thank you, thank, thank you, God, for that, because I could have been sad. But now, then the hairspray happened, and it just continued and continued. I'm not going to lie, there were a couple days that I was like, <laughs> I cannot remember, you can't stop the beat. Um, I was tired, you know, but yeah. it, just, it just filled me up in a way. And then, of course, we all got really close, and none of us wanted to say goodbye, and we really haven't. We're, we're still very tight. I talk to Jay Head all the time, and Judini and me the other night. I mean, we're, we, of course, Dev is like my own kid, and Ariana, and, and I don't know. I'm just very, and Maddie, I just had her sing for good with me, and I can never remember that, how to say this. It's, it rhymes with Doritos, and I think you say it's Cerritos, California. Yeah. And um, the, that was amazing, too. So it's, a, you see, it's the, it's the gift, it's the circle that just yeah. keeps going. And, and I was tired, but boy, was I fulfilled. And with Rosie, who helped start my career. Anyway, this isn't about just me, I realize. I, I, I don't mind. <laughs> well, I want to go back to Neil. When you, when you sit here and you watch this, you realize this was one night. This whole show was done live. Seriously. We had goosebumps. I, I was watching it. I was dancing up there, too, doing the same thing you were. But you think about the people, the number of people that went into making that happen, Neil. Just tell the audience, like, about the number. It's, I, I think we did some sort of rough estimate, yeah. and it, it's probably about 500 people, oh, wow. you know, Isn't including amazing? cast and crew that, that all gear themselves for this one night. That, that's only on the production and cast level. And then there are all the people that work behind the scenes at the network, at the publicity department, and the marketing department, and the advertising department. So it's a lot of people that kind of focus on this one night of broadcasting. And uh, there's, there's a lot riding on it. I mean, insofar as bringing the theater experience to people's homes for it to be successful, and that's always been kind of a goal of ours is to kind of make that more tangible in people's homes and uh and because it used to be where theater was a, a bad word it was a dirty word you didn't say it if you wanted to get something <laughs> sold you know that you can't do anything like theater and um this kind of took this whole live musical event yearly has kind of taken the stench away a little bit so now it's not such a dirty word because that was my next question. Talk about how these live events spark a passion for the arts and everyone. And people who may not be able to get to Broadway, and you give them Broadway on TV live once a year. 
I mean, for me, like uh, growing up, growing up in Oklahoma, as you now know, um, <laughs> I we could never have afforded to go for even two or three days. Had dinner, stayed in a hotel. So when Sound of Music started, and we know that sometimes our Broadway community look, there's no better community in the world than Broadway, in my opinion. But we're also very, um, you know, we we can we c- critique, we critique. You know, we <laughs> want people, we want to see it done right. And when I saw The Sound of Music, I was sitting at home. I remember I had to DVR it because I was working, and I saw it. I was so proud. I thought, first of all, Carrie Underwood is doing something outside of the box for her and doing good. I mean, let's let's think about it. She's playing Maria Von Trapp. Never mind climbing a Swiss ha- mountain. She's got to sing all those songs. <laughs> so the kids were great. Everybody was great. And then people... Then it became okay. Then everybody's waiting to see what are they going to do next? What are they going to do? Especially the Broadway community. The people that had their knife and fork out are now in saliva. Now they're waiting. Maybe I'm going to get it. And, um, and I said this, did the same thing watching Peter Pan. And I thought, yes, yes, we're seeing Christopher Walken doing something live. This is, in, this is in crazy good. And then we see The Wiz, which I happen to... I mean, I was in my tub going, I should be in this, but there's really not a part for me. (laughs) And then when Hairspray came, I thought, oh, please, God, let me get, you know, some part. And I didn't, I knew they were doing it, but I would never cross that boundary, but I was so glad. And then, of course, after it's over, we hear rumors of what they're going to do. So what they've done, what you've done, is not only made theater cool again, but you've made it the it thing. Yeah. The yeah. it thing. Now, other networks yeah. and other places are doing it, maybe not <clears throat> altogether live. Trust me, we are doing it live. <laughs> so um, I'm just saying, I'm just saying to be f- friendly and uh, know some somebody who cares about the theater, and this was before. Remember, Annie was t- 2000? 1999. Okay, and I was just 16. So, right. you know, he they started it. And it evolved, yeah, from from TV movies to movies, and now now live. I'm so pr- I'm so very proud. I can say it because I've known him for so long, and and I, he's sitting here, but he knows that him and Craig know how I feel, and of course that extends to the NBC and Bob Greenblatt. So that's a long-winded answer, and I know people got to pee. So Neil, it must be great for you starting in the theater and your love for the theater of what. Yeah, I mean it, it, it's. Um... I was telling my friend earlier, you know, that I had always wanted a career in the theater. And moving out to Hollywood, you think you're going to leave it behind. But I think we found a way of incorporating our love for the theater and the work that we do out there. And even in things that don't necessarily seem to be theater-based, you know, we kind of inject our own kind of like, like, where's Waldo? theater reference yeah, to it yeah. so so people that know and I know that it's it's a nod as opposed to it really being a theater piece um, so yeah it's been incredibly gratifying that that people kind of have glommed on to the passion and that it isn't you know Bob said something really smart he said that um, theater used to be thought of as rarefied but when you have touring productions of Phantom of the Opera and Wicked and Jersey Boys and all these other musicals that tour around so extensively and go to small cities it's not as foreign that that there is a knowledge and so doing it on TV is taking it another step further and and it really is kind of in uh, an unspoken mission for Neil, what were some of the changes you incorporated into Hairspray from last year's The Wiz Live? How did the move to a studio backlot change your approach to these shows? Um, it's, it's a good question, Richie. Yeah. Uh, um, each one, each iteration of the musicals, of the live musicals, has been different for us. When we, when we started with Sound of Music, we really didn't know what we were doing, so it, it was basically very proscenium. And then after that was broadcast, we thought, why don't we try something different? So with Peter Pan, it became 
more 360. It was very expensive with Neverland and our sets and the flying, which actually didn't work until the, the, the night, until you, it was broadcast. We were rehearsing the flying right up until that moment. Um, and then with The Wiz, what we did was, uh, it was proscenium, but we decided that we, we'd use the LED screens in a, in a very bold way and a very much uh, bright way, which, which was very successful. And then switching it up to Hairspray, I mean, then, then came Grease Live, which was really excellent. And they went outdoors. And what's so great is that everybody can grow from everybody else's experience. So we took the experience of Grease Live, and then we added other touches in terms of actual sets on, a, on the back lot. And uh, it was more of a hybrid uh, in terms of film, TV, and movies. The others were kind of hybrids of, film, uh, of TV and theater. So I think we've kind of rearranged our thinking in terms of uh, Hairspray Live. What an incredible creative team. Oh, yeah. Talk about you know, Alex and Kenny and Mark and Scott and all, yeah. everybody. What I mean, a team, the that is, team, right? Yeah, that is the, the dream team. Yeah. Uh, we had the good fortune of working with Kenny Leon yeah. before on The Wiz, and we also had worked with him earlier. We did Raisin in the Sun for TV, so he's one of our favorite directors. and. Uh, and Alex Rosinski, who did the TV camera work, is kind of brilliant. He's kind of one of these <laughs> intense guys and he that just the best. yeah. And he's he's very into counting. If you knew what was going on in the truck, <laughs> <laughs> and um, and then of course to have Jerry Mitchell recreate his choreography, Derek McLean, who did the production design, has done all of the TV musicals for us. Uh, Mary Vogt did the costumes, who has worked with Kristen before on Pushing Daisies. And uh, she's really extraordinary. And so we're, we're blessed with this great little band of, of artists that really understand what we're all trying to do. And it's a great group of artists that have the same goal. Let's talk about the day of. I mean, you all saw this thing. He, they, someone calls action in the truck, right? I mean, mm -hmm. Neil's in the truck. I mean, what was that day like for you, Kristen? I mean, she posted a beautiful picture on Facebook, what went on her wig cap before you put your wig on, right? It looked like something out of like... Alien. Alien. It's like <laughs> three or four microphones and so much wire, right? I'm the crazy person that doesn't want my microphone to show. I know, oh, I yeah. know. So I had, uh, let's do it like we do on Broadway. And yeah. we, I, we, we wear two mics, one in case one goes out because you're live. It's, and then the other one hopefully will work. Yeah. And I put one here and one here. And then I had my um, heavy, heavy wig on. And I, I, I think we started, didn't we have it like a, Janine, do we have like a run through it? Like, it was today, the day before we had the run through, the, the day of. I, we I still think rehearsed we, there, that there day. Was, there were some things that were being rehearsed. Yeah. yeah, we were still rehearsing, and then we got ready, and then we did the, we did the sucker. And wait, wait, but did you tell him about uh, Kenny's like little sermon? Oh, uh, how can I leave this out? <laughs> okay, so he calls everybody out on stage. Our um, director, Kenny Leon. Our, our director, and we're in the gym, like that gym area, and. I don't, I don't, the best way I know to describe it is what, uh, forgive me for the comparison, but it was a beautiful, beautiful speech about how we are coming together to make art, but how we're also coming together in humanity and how, how, how much we have more to learn and how far we've come. And it was a, a speech that inspired Several, we were standing, but if we could have stood up further, um, there would have been several, I think, standing ovations, probably. I think it, it, it likened itself to, I mean, for me, it w would have been just like, I mean, I hate, I, I, I want to use the, the comparison. It was a Martin Luther King, yes. like, um, it, not, not, it was a humanity. It was a humanity yeah, speech. Yeah, I'm Jewish, I, and I, it felt like I was in church. Oh! <laughs> Shalom! Oh. We were so, I mean, we were all, like, I was like, he's seriously going to do this to me right before I walk out there? I mean, we were kind of a mess, but it also, 
inspired us and helped. It gave us the perfect tone to begin and our piece. And Rosie O'Donnell, I'll remember, Rosie was like, Beside like, herself. There were two of her. Crying, <laughs> yeah. She was a wreck. She was a wreck, yeah. She was to and, and a wreck at the end. You were a wreck at the I end. I was too, I was crying. <laughs> it was special. Yeah. Where do you put, your, as a performer, where do you put your mind, like when they say places, you know it's going live to millions of people all around the world. How do you prep? What's going through your mind? Dear Jesus, um, <laughs> please help me not drop my, my baton. Um, what I do is I am, I am one of those that kind of goes right into the character right then. Um, I also, people say, oh, this should be easy for you, Kristen, because yeah. you do this live all the time. It is, but it isn't. And you know what I mean, because, yeah, on Broadway, we and I'm on a concert tour right now, I get many opportunities to correct mistakes I make. And that's life. We make mistakes all the time. I mean, in the broadcast, my bra strap popped at the end. So that's just how it goes. But, um, and I say that with pride. Um, but I will say, um, I will say that, you know, live on TV, it's a one-shot deal. So we don't get to come on air tomorrow night and do it even better. Um, and that, that, that was a, the most nerve wracking part for me. I was like, please just don't let me fall, yeah. you know, break something, hurt somebody else, you know, um, help me see my mark because we're, we are thinking about where we're hitting for camera. And it was, I thought when I look at hairspray and we were saying this back there, we were watching yeah. it again. I just, I'm so proud to be, I'm so proud of it. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. And yep. you know, it, it, it turned out, I mean, technically. Technically, I think it was the best of the ones that we've done, and and emotionally, and and yeah. just the material is so rich, and the cast was extraordinary. You know, of course, we in the truck we see all these mistakes, and we're kind of like, there's nothing you can do about it. Like uh, in Sound of Music, uh, Carrie almost tripped down the mountain when she was singing Sound of <laughs> Music. And, when you think about it, Maria von Trapp probably yeah, did the then, same thing. And so. then one of one of the Nazis just forgot his line and like. Good. Yeah, it was like. Uh, yeah. And you know, and the flying in Peter Pan, and whether whether Dorothy and the Wiz was going to hit that uh, last note of home, and so we're just kind of clutching. And in Hairspray, uh, the can didn't open. And who who fixed it? Yeah, that was the that was the big the big reveal on the can yeah. didn't open. Yeah, it didn't open, and Marty and I are just there, and you know, I'm like, mm, no, it, it just kept kind of flying yeah, open, yeah. and I'm like, but, not supposed to see that Harvey's character may or may not be in there, and I was just like, I think I used my foot. Yeah, so yeah, so so you're just kind of like given. You have to give in to that experience of yeah, live and theater. embrace it, and that's why people watch it. They 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 watch it to enjoy, but they also watch it because they know something could go wrong. Yes. And, and it, it's true, and inevitably it does, because it's always a tightrope walk. <laughs> it is. It is. It's not like we For the performance. Yeah. yeah. But you know, it happens in live theater, too. You see right. little things go wrong all the time in there. For an audience that goes some nights, like, oh, I'm I here, it's there. live. I was there the night her wig flew off in Pippin. Yeah. You know, we saw Charlotte Temboise do her big number in Pippin, big press night. Yeah. Her whole wig blew off. Yeah. She threw the wig on the floor with all of her mic pack and just finished that number. That's a star right there. <laughs> talk about the cast. You started to talk about what an incredible cast that you just saw in this. I mean, the best of the best. Right. I mean, um, I don't think we could have done a, uh, gotten a better cast than the one that we had, yeah. and it it was the people that we called who were the first people we called said yes, you know, which is which is great, you know. Starting with Harvey, and I remember telling Kristen that Harvey was going to do it, and so she was thrilled about that. And um, you know, we we did audition for uh, the young for Link and for Amber, so. Um, Actually, it was really the hardest job to find Garrett. You know, there were there were yeah. that were so many people that auditioned for the role of Link, and Dove we wanted from the start because we knew she had this history with with Kristen. But she was doing wasn't she doing the movie, movie. with you? No, yeah, she was doing a movie together where we played mother and daughter. Yeah, I said I know you don't care, but it should be Dove. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you, they always make the right decision, but then when I yeah. found out. Oh, I was so happy. And then with Ariana, which was the big surprise, uh, she called us. Yeah. 
because she said that uh, to play that role was kind of her dream. So she always wanted to do it. And seriously? <laughs> so we were, we were thrilled. And Marty, of course, I mean, it, it, it's like a cast of all stars. And uh, Jennifer Hudson, oh. who we've worked with before, who is kind of a, a goddess, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah well, I think we all kind of uh, have crutches on Jennifer Hudson. And, I think uh, she must be getting tired of videos for me in the middle of the night. <laughs> I, I hope she's sleeping for she, some no, of that. No, she's not. She, emails, she videos me back and she'll be like, sing, she'll sing something. I'm like, she just sang like her dialogue to me. And I just, I love her. No, she's, she's, one, her. she's one of the greats. Uh, so we, we, were, we were blessed. And it was, it was a joy from beginning to end in terms of the, our rehearsal period, everything. Because you graciously took, they took a little press posse out to be on the set. And we all sat with them. We were on that set in the afternoon. <laughs> it was so hot. It was so hot. <laughs> but I have never seen everybody, everybody in the show would sit with us. They were so excited to get ready to do this project. Everybody, top of the game, everybody's like, I can't wait to get in front of that, you know, that, those live cameras. Oh, we were. Yeah. It was for real. Yeah, I love that for reals. This is a great question from the audience. You know, they discovered Maddie, just so you know. I mean, Neil, I go to these things at Telsey. So for anybody out there who wants to be an actor or an actress, I mean, they discovered her. There were thousands of people who went to this audition and all went in there to sing for them. They discovered her, which I think is the most yeah. amazing thing in the world. So this question is, I'm currently a student at AMDA for the performing arts, what advice would both of you give for a young aspiring Broadway film and TV performer to start their career? Uh, I would say that, uh, and I've said this before, and it's the, the, the truth. If you can see yourself doing anything else and being happy, then you should go do that thing. <laughs> but if you cannot see yourself doing anything else and being happy, then you should train, train your butt off, Work hard, listen to your teachers, and go for it. Love it. Is that great advice? Yeah. Master class. Neil, from your um, perspective. And, you know, based upon the experience we had with The Wiz, where Shanice Williams just oh, walked yeah. in off the street and with Maddie on Hairspray, I would say the best advice is to audition and just audition and get the experience. Because when Shanice showed up, she didn't expect to get the part. She wanted the experience of auditioning yeah. because she thought it would add to her ability later on. So where you, where you find auditions, open calls, audition. OK, because there's so many young actors here. Uh -huh. And they say, I have talent, but I don't audition well. Do you like to audition? And what do you look for, Neil, when someone comes to audition for you? What do you look for in the room? Um, you know, I think a lot of actors think that the people behind the desk don't want them to do good. And my experience oh, yeah. being be behind you the desk is you, you, you want somebody to come in and blow your socks off. And um, usually the person that comes in the room informs you that they that they're the person that you're looking for. And, and sometimes, you know, like a lot of actors go out and they think they did a lousy job. And that's not sometimes the case. Sometimes it just isn't exactly what the people behind the desk have in mind for the part. It's not that you're not talented. It's not that you're not great. It's not that you're not going to work all the time. It's just not what the people behind the desk look for. So I, I, I personally look for somebody to tell me to speak to me just in terms of how they present themselves. Not even if, even if they do kind of a semi-good audition, you can tell. When Maddie first came in, you know, she was, she was okay, but there was something, and there was something that Bernie Telsey, the casting director, Sorry. saw, and he said, no, you gotta, you gotta see her again. So we brought her back and we thought, oh, she is good. And then the next time she came back, we decided that we'd put her in Tracy gear. So we put on the wig and we, we gave her some costumes. And then, you know, there was, it was undeniable. So it's such a, a kind of a hard thing to describe, but, but it's usually not the actor coming in. It's just the combination of things. A connection. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, for, listening to him talk is such a great, also, reminder for, for me too, because um, 
you know, a lot of times as, as I speak directly to young artists, yeah. um, we put ourselves in, our bo in a box. Oh, we're perfect for this part, and we're perfect for this part. And I can remember um, there was a show that I was on on Broadway, a uh, Kander and Ebb musical, uh, Scott Ells directed and St St Susan Stroman choreographed called Still Pier about, thank you, thank you guys. I was there opening um, night. Uh, yes, you were. <laughs> and um, it was, um, the audition called for, for this part, Precious McGuire, to be a tall, leggy chorus girl who could sing a high C. Well, I had an E flat, but that's beside the point. Um, <laughs> I didn't have the tall, leggy part, and I went in anyway to audition. Um, I think the main thing you have to remember is to put your ego at the door and just go in and have the experience of it. And um, the part ended up changing for a four foot 11 <laughs> soprano from Oklahoma. So I think you can never say, oh, I'm not right for that part. Um, I'm not, I can't play that part, or I'm so right for that part. That's when you're gonna set yourself up for, mm -hmm. you're gonna lose out on a great surprise and then set yourself up for failure if you just go for the parts you're over. When they yeah. offered me the lead in Music Man, oh. I thought it had to be Zanita. No, we were at Joe <laughs> Allen's. <laughs> yes! We, we, we went to dinner with Kristen, and we, we said we'd like you to be in the Music Man. And then she, she, she actually thought it's Zanita, who was like the young, <laughs> girl that has like six lines and no songs and then we told her it was for Marion and I never would have get, gotten the opportunity to be remember before then I had played girls I mean very, girls I'm very proud of Glenda and, yeah. and Sally and all, all, Precious and Stopier in different roles but this was my first leading lady role and I thought I can never they'll never I'm, you know, I'm a comedian. They'll never put me. I, I'll never. But that was probably one of the best things I've ever did. And I, because I wouldn't, put, I went. I went. All right. Someone sees you that way. Give yourself that chance well, to be you great. Are a leading lady. Well, now. <laughs> <laughs> Took me a while. So don't overthink it. Just go in and be the best you can. Compete with yourself. Yeah, beautiful. See, compete with yourself. You never know. And guess what? If I come in for him, yeah. and he doesn't know me, and I'm fantastic just doing me, I might not be right for A, but he's got B and C and D down the line. He might think about that for later. You almost got the whiz. <laughs> <laughs> I did sing Home and Glee, the all-white version. So wrong, and, but, but you know, I did, I did watch the whiz, and I was just like, oh, I want to be in it so bad. It, it's just one of my favorite musicals, probably. And then, of course, crazy that I did Wicked. It's just like yeah. a, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Full circle. Yeah. If you could sum up the best part of the experience of Hairspray Live, what was it for each of you? It's a big question. Hmm. Um, I, I would say my favorite experience, which might dovetail with yours, was the family environment of it all. Uh, because everybody had their focus on the same thing. And when you're in a creative environment, sometimes that's kind of rare where you all are focused on doing the same thing. And that to me was very, very um, moving. Yeah. Kristen, for you. I think ditto, for sure. Um, getting to be with family and, you know, I, I had become, I'm very close with Dub. If, you know, if I, if I had my own child, I, you know, it would be her. Um, Ariana, I've known since she was nine, eight, nine. Um, obviously being back with Neil and Craig. Um, Sean Hayes, you know, being with Sean and Rosie, but also just getting to be with the history of the show itself. Like, you know, looking at Judine and just knowing that she had been there, you know, and that you love the piece so much and getting to be back with Harvey and that you care about the piece, watching someone else. That's the way I am with the music theater because we both know that when it's done well, it takes the highest form of skill set there is. When it's done poorly, well, then we are subject to be made fun of, and we should be. But when it's done well, there's nothing more gratifying, in my opinion. Yeah. And I felt like that we were doing it, that we were just doing it well. And 
Yeah. It starts at the top. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it was amazing. And from being there from the beginning, I get goosebumps. And this little guy was in my stomach when I did hear his <gasps> Yep, that's right. For, yeah. And he, I mean, it's amazing. See? I, I love Neil and Craig. If they never do another musical, which is, that's not going to happen. Yeah. I love them to life because We're doing that. the family environment, it's real. It's the real thing in real time. And every star on that show was real and fabulous. And to me, that's the most important thing. Yep. The realness of it. It starts at the top. That's what yeah. I but think. But it was also the timing. It. It, was, yeah. it was also... Uh, it was, it was also the timing of when it was broadcast and unfortunately continues in terms of the, the message uh, that I think drew us even closer because we knew that what Hairspray was about was very timely and it was, it was a moment to kind of like really come together with all of the strife that was going on outside and and the the rise of racism that to have something about self-acceptance about coming together about the uh, responsibility yeah, yeah. I, so it just everything kind of connected all the dots connected with the history of the piece with the cast with the production team and the time my last question is a personal question for both of you. Yes, I'm single. I don't talk. <laughs> <laughs> this is my boyfriend. Wow. Uh, what is the yes, best? We have an announcement to make. <laughs> I love this. Might as well do it here. Which is yours? It's yours. What is the best bit of advice that you live by that you've been given, either personally or professionally, that you live by? Best bit of advice. You both have these incredible careers and how you handle yourselves through life. Well, I don't always do it. <laughs> um, my dad has always told me since I was a little, my dad always told me since I was really little, littler than I am, he would say, <laughs> don't sweat the small stuff. Yeah. And I always thought, yeah, 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 yeah. And as I've gotten older, it's, that's something I've really had to like, you know, this, this angel and the devil and, you know, not sweating the small stuff. There's bigger things issues in the world and there's always somebody who's got it harder and that's a great piece of advice I don't always I don't always listen to it as much as I wish I did but it's a great piece of advice so for you little nuggets down there <laughs> when things get rough and there's oh so and so said something about you over here and someone did something not only do you say delete but you just don't sweat the small stuff See? just don't sweat the small stuff great advice I have to take it every day well. Neil, for you. Um, I, 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 it's not that I think about this all the time, but it's usually when I'm searching for an answer, it's usually very, very clear and very close to me, the answers. Yeah. So um, I, it's about identifying what's in your vicinity that can get you to your goal. So, it, it, so I've, I've always kind of lived that way. And, and I've just been able to identify what the answers are. Yeah. Beautiful advice, too. Thank you. This has been such Thank a you, remarkable we love you. evening, right? We love you. Well, I love both of you, but ladies and gentlemen, Kristen Shunowit, Neil Marin, Hairspray Live. <laughs>